I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. I hope you had a beautiful Diwali and I hope you're ready to get back on track with your workouts, with your nutrition, with your sleep, with your meditation and pranayama practice. Remember, we can enjoy the festive season. There's nothing wrong with having a good time. There's nothing wrong with indulging in sweets and balance and moderation, but we need to get back onto track with our fitness regime, with our nutrition, with our sleep and our emotional practices. Anyway, uh, I hope you had a great Diwali. Today I wanna to talk about vitamin A. Vitamin A, okay, you, you need to overdose on this particular vitamin. I'm talking about learning the power of acceptance. Okay, if there's any way that you wanna reduce the stress in your life, you can meditate as much as you want. You can do yoga, pranayama, you can take anti-anxiety pills, you can take depression medication, or whatever it is that you think is working for your stress, okay? The only thing that's really truly gonna work is the power of acceptance. When you learn to accept what you cannot control in life, most of our stress and worry tends to disappear. Over the last six to seven months, most of the diseased cases that we've got have a root cause with worry. We need to understand today that even science and even the top doctors around the world tell you that worry causes diseases. It's as simple as that. Stress causes diseases. We all know about that. That's why people are trying to de-stress, right? If stress wasn't dangerous, we wouldn't have so many tools and mechanisms and so many things that we try to use to de-stress because the entire medical world, the entire world of wellness knows that stress and worry is the root cause of all diseases that exist. So today we're gonna to talk about the power of acceptance. In life, we will have to accept the onset of disease, maybe, we don't know. We may have to accept failures, we may have to accept you know, broken relationships, we may have to accept lost love and so many other things. The sooner we learn to accept, the easier it is for us to move on. It doesn't mean that the process is easy. It doesn't mean that it comes without pain. It comes without, you know, feelings which are difficult to cope with. But the bitter, ugly truth is that we have to learn to accept to move on in life. We have to learn to accept to enjoy the beauty of life, to allow joy to enter our hearts, to allow love to enter our hearts. When we live in a world of denial, of non-acceptance, okay, the next step in that world is a victim mode. The next step in victim mode is we use mechanisms like blame, mechanisms like why me, mechanisms like denial, anger, resentment, guilt, all of these things. There are nothing wrong with those feelings. When we go through bad stuff, we will feel those feelings for a while. But finally, it is our responsibility to move out of victim mode into action. It is only us who can get ourselves out of victim mode. So, you know, unfortunately in life, a lot of people get struck down by a deadly disease. Now you can wish you never had it. You can wish that the future may be better. But right now you got the disease. Fine, you've gone through the feelings. Now you have to allow acceptance to float into your life so you can move to action. If you do not move to acceptance, you will not move to the right action. There'll be bitterness and resentment that constantly pulls you down. Maybe your business has failed. Okay, maybe you're, a, maybe you're a teenager and you didn't get the marks that you wanted right now. It's not the end of the world. We have to accept so that we can move on, but we cannot move on without acceptance. Or we can move on, but on a path which is very difficult, full of resentment, guilt, you know, then we neglect our health and everything else. Remember, to help us with acceptance, because like I said, it's an easy word to say. It's difficult to do. <clears throat> When it comes to acceptance, we really got to motivate, us, motivate ourselves with certain truths and certain laws of nature which never change. Like number one, nothing is permanent. Everything changes. No matter who you are, no matter how much money you have, no matter what your designation is, okay? It doesn't matter how successful you are. All that you need to remember and remind yourself every day is that nothing is permanent and everything changes. Your health changes. Maybe, I hope not for the worse, but your health will change. Your children will change as they grow up. I know so many moms and dads who still hold on to that dream that their children will never change. And as the children move into teenagers and find their own paths in life, obviously they're gonna change like you as a parent, you change when you were a kid. And then the parents go through depression and they try to hang on to the kids. And then there's so much of conflict between the children and the parents. You gotta let go, you gotta accept that your kids are gonna change. You gotta accept that love may change. You gotta accept that sex will change. You gotta accept that your wealth and your money may change. You gotta accept that time will change. You gotta accept that feelings will change. 
Anyone who doesn't believe that these things are going to happen is living in a bubble, is living in a fantasy world. And when your fantasy world or your bubble bursts or is rocked, that's when all the disappointment, the regret, the complaint, the blame and all of that floats into your life. You need to understand the beauty of life is unpredictable, being unpredictable. No one likes someone who's predictable. After that, after a while, that person gets boring. No one likes predictable relationships. The beauty of life is it is unpredictable. We got to be open to that. But today we want everything to be the way we want it to be. OK, so that leads me to the next point of my discussion, which is expectations. <clears throat> it's OK to have expectations and dreams. It's OK to have milestones and all of this stuff, but also be OK for the opposite of it. If you don't get it, if it fails you, if it doesn't happen the way you want it. The problem is we hold on to expectations, expecting things to work out the way we want it to be, expecting to hear the things that we want to hear. People should say what I want to hear. People should behave in the way I want them to behave. These are expectations which are going to hurt you at some point. <clears throat> the sooner you learn to accept the fact that nothing has to be your way, no matter what, you could have put in the perfect SOP in your company, that's standard operating procedures. You could have put in the perfect algorithm and things can still go wrong. So with expectations, build them, it's beautiful, but also be able to build the power of acceptance to accept when things don't happen your way. The second, entitlement. Today, too many people, young kids, teenagers, adults, senior citizens, too many of them hold on to entitlement. Oh, because I'm wealthy. Everything should be my way because I'm rich, because I'm the CEO, because I'm a manager, because I'm a leader, because I'm whoever you think you are. We think we're entitled. But remember, entitlement doesn't work. You are only entitled to what you deserve and you deserve what you have worked for. It is called the law of compensation. We did a whole video on that. OK, it's called the law of compensation. It's called the law of sacrifice. There are so many things. You reap what you sow. Okay, you could have been born with a silver spoon in your mouth. We know so many people who are and they've squandered off all their wealth and all of their money. You reap what you sow. So the more entitlement you think you have, the more difficult it is for you to accept. Even if you are entitled, okay, and maybe you are entitled, okay, you have to build in the mechanism and the power of the law of acceptance, the power of acceptance to accept that things always don't have to be the way you want it to be. So work with entitlement. Entitlement destroys people. Entitlement, then entitlement and expectations then leads to the third point, which is egos and, and pride. So we use our ego and pride thinking that, no, why me? This should not happen to me. And we do not accept. We do not accept because our ego and pride blinds us from the fact that you have no control over what may have happened. You have to accept. You have to let go. So the only way out, out of any stress in life, whether today, you may have a life-threatening disease. Your business may fail. I mean, this could happen to anyone, to the best of anyone. We have to learn to cultivate the ability to truly accept whatever comes our way and embrace it. This doesn't mean you become a doormat. There is always action you can take. But the whole point is you have to learn how to accept. Now, most people, they don't know how to accept themselves. If you don't know how to accept yourself, how will other people accept you? You have to learn how to accept who you are if you want everyone to accept you the way you want them to. But most people can't accept their own faults. They, can't expect, they, they cannot accept their mistakes. They cannot accept their past. They cannot accept their looks, their shortcomings, and all of these things. If you cannot accept yourself, there's no reason why someone else has to accept you. So acceptance, again, begins with ourselves. We have to learn to cultivate the ability to truly accept whatever comes our way and learn to embrace it. Like I said, you can wish and intend that it never happened. You can wish and intend for the future to be better, like Deepak Chopra says. But right now, it is what it is. You've got to accept it. There's a simple exercise for you to do, okay? If you are struggling to accept something in your life right now, right now, write down what is it that you are struggling to accept in your life. Number two, OK, what is the worst that can happen if you accept it? Number three, what are the action points that you can take to accept this? If there are no action points, there's nothing you can do. You have to accept it. If you don't accept it, you're going to have all the negative emotions that come with it. Hatred, anger, guilt, resentment, 
bitterness, blaming, complaining, and all of that, and that's not going to solve your problem. Okay, and now if there are some things that you can do to accept it, do it. So it has to move to action. When you have a problem or a person that you cannot accept, number one, ask yourself, is there anything I can do about it? If yes, what can I do? And do it. If no, you have to accept it. If you list all the stress that you have in your life today, and at the side of all of these stress points on that list that you make, you are able to write and truly accept each of them. They are no longer stressors. They may be obstacles in your life that you don't like, but they don't stress you out anymore because you've accepted them. So you can wallow in non-acceptance, or you can look at what are the action points that I need to do to accept, and what should I do, and move to action. But I can tell you today that there are too many people who do not want to accept. When you do not accept, the next residual emotion is worry. And worry is a sickness. Worry is a disease. Getting a little bit worried about a couple of things here and there is not going to kill you. But it's the chronic worry that we wake up with and that we go to sleep with every single night that is causing every possible disease out there. You have a symptomatic medicine, you have homeopathy, you have a diet plan, all of that stuff is useless if you don't learn how to manage your worry because your worry is destroying your immune system. It is creating inflammation in you. It's destroying your skin, your hair. You can be the prettiest girl or the most handsome guy in the world, but if you're worried, it's gonna show on your face no matter how much of makeup you put, how much of goji berries you eat. It's gonna show on your face because that's what worry does to us. It is destructive. There is no amount of makeup that can hide the lines of worry on a face. Okay, there is no amount of creams in the market that can hide away the worry that exists within you. So like I said, we have practices like meditation, pranayama that teaches us to be calm. And in that calm, we learn to get the strength to accept. There are just too many people hiding behind their yoga practice, their pranayama practice, hiding behind meditation, hiding behind spirituality, thinking their lives are going to get better. It will get better if you take the essence of what you're learning and you practice it. Just doing the practice, okay, and doing your yoga and meditation and not taking action to change your life, not taking action to accept, to learn how to forgive, to learn how to let go, is useless. Your whole practice is a fad. I know you don't like me saying that, but that's the truth. There are so many people who read spiritual books, they only read and read and read, but yet they've not mustered the strength to forgive, to accept, to let go. Stop reading and start practicing. Stop reading and start doing. Or when you, when you read something in your practice that is really good, take that and practice it until you become perfect and then read the next chapter, the next chapter, and then read the next book. Stop fooling yourself. Stop fooling yourself. There are a ton of people out there doing all of these meditative practices, lighting candles, incense sticks, doing pujas, going to churches and temples and mosques and all of that stuff. And every scripture preaches forgiveness, acceptance, letting go. Every religion, the beauty of every religion is they talk about the same things. Kindness, compassion, forgiveness, acceptance, let go, leave your past behind. All of these things. But here we are hiding behind more and more spiritual mechanisms and failing because we don't practice and we don't put what we learn into action. So learn the power of acceptance. Make a list of all the things that you're struggling with in life and then do the exercise I told you. What is it that you're finding difficult to accept? You find that your ego comes up, your pride comes up, your sense of entitlement comes up, your sense of expectations come up. If that's the truth, break through it. Okay, write down all the action points that you need to do and then take that action. It's as simple as that. You can spend millions of dollars, thousands of dollars, hundreds of dollars and getting self-help and doing all of these things. I don't have a problem with it, but everyone's trying to tell you the same thing. Learn, practice and action. Have a great day. Have a great week. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right and breathe deep.